Let's talk about how to back up your virtual machines off-site in XCPNG. We're going to do this with Zen Orchestra. We're going to use the S3 storage option. Now, this does not require that you use Amazon S3. I'll link to a video I have on how to set up MinIO on TrueNAS, but you can use it on more than TrueNAS. That way, if you want to set up a S3 compatible storage, you can. And that's what I'll be using for this particular video. So let's get started. <music> Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance our operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, I want to start this video out by pointing out the commit version I'm at, D67A2, which is the most current version available here in December 4th of 2024. There's always going to be newer versions as they keep updating them, but this is the commit that I'm using right now. And yes, this is the self-compiled version. I try to do all my videos with the self-compiled version. That way, it's very accessible to any of you that want to use this in your home lab. This is absolutely something you can do. All of this is the open source and free version of this software. Now, you'll find an entire playlist link down below of how to set that up along with lots of other tutorials on Zen Orchestra. So let's get started on this one here. Now the first step is going to settings, then remotes, and you can see I have two NFS shares already set up. A question comes up a lot is can I just use NFS or SMB over the VPN to send this data off-site? That's a terrible idea because those protocols are not well suited to work over a VPN and the performance would be much worse than it is with the Amazon Web Services S3 option we're going to go with here. Setting a new one up is easy. Choose the Amazon S3, give it a name. By default, it wants to use HTTPS, leave that there. If you're using a self-signed certificate, you have the option to go ahead and accept that self-signed cert. You put in either the IP or DNS in here. In my case, I'm using IP address, and you'll see that up here where it's IP address colon port number. Really simple to do if you do it that way, but yes, DNS will work. Then you have the bucket name, directory, access key, which is similar to the username, and then the secret key on there. And if you're using MinIO or following my MinIO video, I've covered out to get all those set up there. You also have the option here to set up and encrypt all the data set to that particular remote. Now, anytime you have a remote enabled or you just want to disable it and re-enable it, it'll run a speed test each time to let you know how fast it is. And of course, these local backups are going to go substantially faster than these remote ones. But if we go ahead and enable and disable this one, it'll give you an idea of how fast the connection is over the VPN to this particular server. Now that we have this set up, let's go over and find a VM that we want to back up. I have this VM called Debian Offsite Backup Demo. So this is one we're going to use. And you can see if we go here, there's currently no backups attached to it. So we're going to go to the backup page, which you can click here, or go to Backups and choose New. So let's go ahead and choose that VM backup. I'm going to give it the same name as the VM, just because that makes me sane. And then we're going to choose what type of backup. We're going to choose Delta. We're going to choose where we want this to go. And I want it to go off-site, but why not have an on-site copy as well? That's probably a pretty common setup. So here's my off-site, and here is my on-site backup. Then we're going to go and choose Advanced, because I want to set a couple specific things in here. I would recommend having an email address to send the reports to because you want to make sure that these are working. And I generally want all of them. So I usually choose always, not just the skipped ones. That is up to you. Concurrency, choose how many concurrent backups you may want running. If you have a lot of jobs running at the same time, that is definitely a concern. I would set a timeout. If this takes more than two hours to run, something's wrong. But of course, if you're doing this with offsite backups, it may take longer. That is going to depend on the bandwidth you have. So set this accordingly. Full backup interval. There is more documentation you can click here for, but essentially this says rebuild the chain every so often. I'm going to set that at 20. It's a good starting place on there. I'm going to take advantage of the new features now built into XCPNG 8.3. Use MBT plus CBT for transfer disk if available. Purge snapshot. That means it doesn't have to hold on to an extra snapshot. Uh, I can limit the speed if I need to. I'm going to choose offline 
And what that does is stops the VM, grabs the backup and starts it back up. So the VM's down the most minimal amount of time possible, essentially does restart it. It's up to you if you need or want to do that. I prefer to do it that way. Scheduling. Now, this is where you can say, how many do you want to keep and when do you want to run it? We can say we want a daily backup. And let's keep 14 of those backups. Now, 14 backups and running it every day, that'll give us 14 days of retention. Set this accordingly for what works for you. Go ahead and hit OK. And then we have the option under scheduling. And this is something you might want to do. Perform a monthly health check. So we'll check this box, call it a monthly health check. We do not want this running every day. Uh, we'll choose just to run on the first of each month. And where do we want to restore it to? This is where you have options. I'm pulling it off of this particular server down here. I can restore it back to that one, or I can say, hey, run a monthly health check that restores it back to this server. It's probably better to do your test restore on a different system. This is really important because untested backups are just wishful thinking. This can be automated via this tool here to do a monthly health check restore. I love this feature and it just can build some automation into your tooling to do that. I'm not going to enable it for now, so I don't really want this to run. It's just an option I'd recommend if you were doing this in production. Now, this is a feature that just came in December of 2024. I have not done a lot of testing with, but there is the option for doing long-term retention of backups and using this to control the number of backups you want kept monthly, yearly, weekly, daily. Now, once you have all these set, we're just going to go ahead and hit create. All right, now we have this backup created. We can go ahead and run the backup and see what happens. We can look at the task, it's kicking off and running now. Now we can see the backup completed successfully. And one thing to note when doing it this way, maybe not the most ideal to do them concurrently because you can only go as fast as your slowest backup. The slowest backup, of course, is the offsite one, which dragged down how fast it did the local transfer. Not a huge deal, but something to take into consideration when you're setting these up. But this will allow for an offsite backup, and maybe it's even better idea to have these as separate jobs. But let's go ahead and look at the restore because I want to point out how that looks. When you're looking at the restore for this offsite backup and we hit the restore option, you have the Trinity Lab and LTF saw site. So this is how it's going to label them so you know which one you're restoring, whether you're using the local or pulling from remote. Just something that to keep in mind, because obviously if you have a local one, that's going to be faster to do your restore. But let's go ahead and run the backup again a second time and see how long it takes. Go to the backup attached to this Debian offsite VM. Go ahead and run the backup again. And we'll actually show that it's going to go through a shutdown process here. So it's going to shut it down, reboot it as fast as possible because it just needs to grab that snapshot that'll live here temporarily while it does this backup. And if we go over here to tasks, yeah, let's see how long it takes the second time. And we can see the backup was successful. Of note, it only took 16 seconds to do both backups because, well, it only had to transfer 50 megabytes of changes that occurred on there. So, of course, the first time it's a full backup, then after that, it's only going to be incremental. This is one of the reasons I chose incremental because it's going to be substantially faster when you're doing these. Now, let's talk about the VM mirror backup as an other option. What the VM mirror backups does is lets us choose all incremental backups by choosing this or even all full backups this way. These have to be separate jobs. They don't run concurrently. And you would then select the remotes. For, for example, we have our Trinity Lab and we want to send it to LTS offsite. This would take all the incremental jobs that we have that particular storage remote where these are and send it to a, another remote. The remote doesn't have to be offsite. You can choose any of the remote options in here. This is a good way to create an entire mirror of all of your backups. And it does so in one job. And if you're doing it in an offsite manner, such as choosing the offsite remote I am here, you may want to schedule it for when you have the most bandwidth. So you can run your backups maybe during certain hours, but then take all those backups and send them off site during the time when it's most convenient or, as I said, most bandwidth available. And this would run as a separate job. Also solves the concurrent job problem that I showed, where if you run both jobs at the same time to two different remotes, it can only work as the slowest remote that you're targeting. If you want to dive further into how XCPNG works or even watch my video that's dedicated to how the backups work or even another video that's dedicated to showing you how to do the health check, which is the automated 
testing of the backups because untested backups are really just wishful thinking. Those are all in a playlist down below and they're constantly being updated because there's always new features coming down the pipe from the team over at Vates that is behind XCPNG. It is still my favorite open source hypervisor for those wondering. But I love hearing from you. Does this work for you? Is there a better way that you prefer to do backups? Are you more a fan of doing things like ZFS replication or do you like this? Because I like this setup because it allows me to have my servers at one location and I have another server at where that offset location is. I can just point it at the same S3. So technically I can easily send a VM right on over and then restore it back over here for testing or just because I need the VM sent over for whatever reason. It actually works really well for that use case. But let me know your use case down in the comments below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Go ahead and hit the forums, forums.learnsystems.com. And that is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. Also join the XCPNG forums. There are really a lot of people participating in there, including many of the members of the Vates team. They're very much engaged with the community. It's one of the reasons I like the project so much. And thank you.